good afternoon all i would like to extend my gratitude to the organizers of pcsi for giving me this invitation uh, coming to my topic which is uh, cardiac imaging in fontan circulation fontan surgery is one of the best surgical options for lot of congenital heart disease conditions imaging in a post fontan case is not just limited to identifying the anatomical abnormalities we have to take into account the physiological abnormalities like uh, high thrombogenicity high arrhythmogenicity the poor function of a single ventricle the lymphatic uh, channel abnormalities then the effect of a fenestration in a fontan circuit on saturation cardiac output and the presence of turbulence in a fontan circuit and its effect on energy loss high thrombogenicity or de uh, development of a pulmonary venous uh, the systemic venous uh, kind of hypertension and uh, the effect of turbulence on uh, redistribution of hepatic factors into either uh, pulmonary arteries uh, which might have an effect on pulmonary arteriovenous malformation development uh so for assessment uh, for each of these problems of a patient uh, it might be good uh, to, to take into account both anatomical and physiological aspects and uh, these are the diagrams of intracardiac and extracardiac fontan surgeries and uh, it might or may not be associated with a fenestration post fontan complications uh, vary uh, from patient to patient depending upon the age of surgery and lot of other uh, factors and it might be uh, ranging from mild symptoms to severe symptoms and the, often the final outcome is death or cardiac transplantation this is one example uh, of a 15 year old girl who underwent extra cardiac fontan surgery at 11 years of age uh, for complaints of map uh, of uh, vsd and malpost great arteries uh, she also underwent mapca coiling plus uh, left pulmonary artery stending for uh, pulmonary edema as well as uh, pleural effusion and uh, uh, currently uh, because of hemoptysis uh, she presented and her vitals and all other uh, basic investigations were normal so this is the uh, axial and coronal sections of uh, cardiac ct in a venous phase and uh, uh, this is the hepatic veins and ivc which is uh, showing good contrast opacification and as we go superiorly what we are finding is there is a hyperdense uh, border uh, having structure so this is the conduit uh, for connecting uh, ivc to the pulmonary circulation and uh, we can see that there is no kink or thrombosis within the circuit and uh, we can find few artifacts because of the previous mapca coiling as well as uh, the lps tent we can also identify uh, fenestration as a focal defect within this conduit uh, connecting to the uh, atrial chamber and further I mean, when we go up we are able to uh, uh, see the visual, uh, the patency of the uh, right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery and we can also note that uh, the branches of the pulmonary arteries are also patent the other uh, positive finding is mild dilatation of the uh, ascending aorta and also the coronary arteries that is in the proximal portions are uh, normal in this case uh, since the patient presented with the hemoptysis uh, this is an aortic phase uh, angio uh, and we couldn't identify any uh, iotopulmonary collaterals uh, since this is an early opacification phase the fontan circuit uh, is showing some amount of artifacts which shouldn't be con uh, confused with any thrombos and this is the pulmonary parenchymal uh, imaging that is a lung window uh, to look for any lung abnormalities like a infection or a significant pulmonary hemorrhage or uh, any other uh, abnormality so there is some amount of fissural effusion what we can identify and uh, there is some amount of ground glassing in this posterior segments and uh, close to that we are able to identify few pulmonary artery and venous branches suggesting a pulmonary avm related bleed which is the cause for hemoptysis this is the second case, a uh, seven year old girl who underwent uh, again uh, extra cardiac fontan for dextrocardia and uh, double inlet left ventricle and transposed great arteries. Right. Her uh, symptom uh, was dyspnea and uh, her saturation was uh, 85. Uh, ECG didn't show any significant abnormality and uh, there was no feature suggesting a tachycardiomyopathy as the etiology. Troponin were mildly elevated. One of the clinical suspicion was myocarditis. Uh, MRI was uh, planned for this case and uh, these are the uh, white blood imaging uh, which is uh, good for assessing the intracardiac uh, as well as the fontan circuit uh, patency. So this is the fontan circuit what we can uh, find is uh, 
showing good caliber and there is no focal stenosis and uh, practically rules out a uh, pulmonary embolism and the aortic uh, root is also of normal dimension and in certain situations we might be able to identify the uh, coronary artery in the proximal portions at least uh, as in this case and uh, there is significant cardiomegaly and bilateral pleural effusion and for assessing the functions uh, it's uh, uh, better to uh, be seen in uh, two chamber four chamber uh, and coronal views and these are the cine sequences uh, which shows uh, significant lv enlargement and uh, significant uh, global hypokinesia and there is no significant thrombus and the wall thickness of this uh, ventricle is preserved the other positive finding uh, we can find is that there is absence of any turbulence in the fontan circuit which is a reassuring thing and uh, in the delayed enhancement sequences there is a diffuse subendocardial enhancement of the left ventricle and uh, the t1 mapping uh, didn't show any uh, focal myocardial abnormality suggesting myocarditis or amyloidosis so this was a cardiomyopathy which uh, happened in this patient so how to choose between ct and mri uh, the rough uh, tips is like this uh, if you, there is any metallic substances of or we have to image the lung and uh, tracheobronchial tree you prefer a ct in most other situations you can go with an MRI where uh, we have additional of uh, knowledge regarding function, inflammation, scar and also lymphatic system will be very nicely imaged. Then uh, with the presence of symptoms of desaturation arrhythmia, we usually prefer CT. Uh, for assessment of liver nodule and venous occlusion, we prefer MRI, though both can be used interchangeably. Drawbacks are there for both CT and MRI, which are uh, known to most of us and hence I am skipping it. Uh, now how to look into a fontan uh, patient so it's better to go with a segmental approach so start with a fontan circuit uh, starting from ivc to all pulmonary artery branches is a good idea so you can check uh, those things in equilibrium uh, phase of a ct or a multi-phase mr angio so this is uh, one example of a multi-phase mr angio where uh, the ivc to uh, uh, left pulmonary artery connection is uh, very well patent and uh, the SVC to the uh, LPA uh, is also uh, very nicely opacified and the distal uh, right pulmonary artery and branches are also seen. So there is no fontan circuit complication but what we can identify is that there is a large collateral arising from right uh, SVC and which is descending in the mediastinum and is finally uh, draining to the right uh, upper pulmonary vein suggesting a venovenous collateral and this was the result uh, reason for desaturation in this particular case. This is the first uh, CT case which we already uh, uh, reviewed and the uh, if, even in presence of thrombus, uh, like a non contrast uh, MRI angio is uh, easy to identify the extent of thrombus uh, in, in uh, whether it is in SVC or IVC end. Identification of kinks in uh, apicocaval juxtaposition and uh, 3D reconstructions are very good. Uh, for identifying fenestration as well as the distal end of the pulmonary arteries as well as the pulmonary AVMs, uh, uh, CT might be effective. Regarding uh, the function of the chambers, uh, global hyperkinesia have to be identified as well as the AVVR and in certain situations we might have to think of uh, converting a fontan patient into a biventricular candidate also. Delayed enhancement sequences are basically useful prior to electrophysiological studies for uh, uh, planning the procedures and uh, aortic abnormalities is either due to uh, aortopathy or secondary to stenosis or regurgitation of aortic valve and sometimes there might be map cars which might be a culprits. Tracheobronchial tree might get occluded because of plastic bronchitis in certain patients and uh, there could be tracheobronchial compression secondary to aortopathy also. Lung findings are quite variable, uh, maybe pulmonary AVM or maybe pulmonary hemorrhage secondary to warfarin or chronic effusions uh, re resulting in uh, consultations, infections or pulmonary uh, edema like changes secondary to pulmonary venous stenosis. Lymphatic complications uh, including lymphatic leaks can be identified by contrast MR angiogram and uh, 4D flow and computation flow dynamics is that new uh, thing which uh, helps in uh, predicting what will be the best uh, location of anastomosing the hepatic venous or the IVC portion of the um, fontan into the gland and uh, to reduce uh, the uh, turbulence. 
Now, cardiac transplantation uh, is uh, the final uh, thing in certain cases uh, uh, for whom uh, there is a significant uh, liver cirrhosis or malignant transformation, we have to consider a liver transplantation also concomitantly and venous anatomy assessment is uh, important prior to cardiac transplantation. Thank you.